Luke chapter 19. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. It's the cursed city of Joshua 6, 17 and 26. And we have already met a blind man. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was a chief among the publicans, ill of sinners, of wicked people. And he was rich. Those are P.S. And he was rich. So he probably got along with the Pharisees. And he sought to see Jesus who he was. Well, there's a great guy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. So you think Jesus is going to pass him by in a cursed city? Absolutely not. He's seeking. And could not for the press. The press will always keep you from Jesus. Oh, come on. You're, I know. I'm, the, the press will keep you from Jesus. Because he was a little of stature. He's a tiny man. And he ran before. And climbed up to a sycamore tree to see him. He's asking. He's seeking. And he's knocking to get to Jesus. For he was, Jesus was to pass that way. He knew where Jesus was going to come and go. So you know what? I'm going to go there. And one of these days, maybe when we go down to Daytona, maybe somebody God will have there to meet Jesus, by the way. But God's not going to pass them up. God will pass them up that don't want to see Jesus. Let me ask you a question. It said he entered and passed through Jericho. What would you think was the population of the people in Jericho back then? And yet, with all that, we are reading about one man, Zacharias, and we read about one blind man. Both of these men called out to Jesus. And Jesus stopped what he was doing to reach out to them. That mean, nasty Jesus will stop when you truly want him. Jesus, we don't want you here no more. Okay, goodbye. Let's get in the boat, guys. They thrust Jesus out of the city. Okay, goodbye. Jesus walks on the sea. Hey, Jesus! He makes a U-turn and heads back to the boat. Jesus is not going to come and save you. You've got to call out to him. How are they going to call, Paul says, except you send the man with, with beautiful feet. How shall they hear except God sends a preacher? Zacharias had to hear Jesus was coming from the crowd. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto Zach Zacchaeus, Make haste, come down, for today I must abide in thy house. Look at that. Jesus forces himself into a publican's house to eat and drink. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Now what if Zacchaeus would have said, no, you ain't coming in my house. Who do you think you are? Jesus would have just kept on walking. And when he saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. Ew! Jesus, you ought to know better. You don't know who that guy is, and you proclaim to be God. Yeah, you know what? Well, uh, if my wife would knew some of the things in my past, she would have nothing to do with me either. I wouldn't even have anything to do with me. But thank God Jesus still came in with Calvary. He said, you know all that you did? Yeah, I know what I did. You know you deserve hell? Absolutely. I can save your soul with no sin. Good. Do it. Now, if I came to Jesus as a Catholic, that I grew up Polish Catholic, I got Mary. I've got these idols. I've got Jesus between my boobs. That's a new joke in the family now. You think Jesus would have stopped and dined with me that, that April afternoon? I told not. 
And Zachary, Zacharias, I don't want to say Zacharias, but that's Zacharias stood and said unto the Lord, who cares what the people say, Behold, Lord, capital L, capital L, the half of my goods I've given to the poor. Who works? The guy's a sinner, he's helping the poor. The Pharisees are not even helping the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. He says, if. Now, people make this guy a thief. And Jesus doesn't rebuke him or anything. He says, if I've taken anything. Now, maybe he was, and maybe now he's going to go back and redo what he's done wrong. I'll give him that much credit then. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. So this guy was Jewish. In a cursed city that he wasn't supposed to be in. And he invited the Lord into his house and gave him meal. A salvation of works, not belief. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Mark that verse 19.10. That's the key verse of Luke, 19, Luke. And that's why Jesus came. He came to save those ill people. You can't say sinners because you're, you're a sinner. And those, any of the people that picked on Zach, ugh, anybody, Zacchaeus, did not get saved that afternoon. Zacchaeus did. What do you say? Many shall go the broad way, but few shall enter. It just said that when Zacchaeus dies, and I don't know when he dies, if he goes to Abraham's bosom or the glory, but he will be there in heaven. We will see Zacchaeus. These people that picked on Jesus and Zacchaeus, we will not see. Unless they get saved later on. And as they heard these things, heard what? You're saved. I've come to save the which is lost. That's what they heard. He added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should appear immediately. Now verse 10 said he didn't come to bring the kingdom. There's nothing about the kingdom in verse 10 now. They've outright rejected him. I've come now just to save you. I'll build the kingdom later. I sure can't build a kingdom with, you, with all these sinners around. And I'm not talking about the publicans. I'm talking about the Pharisees. Sure can't set them up as a priest, guys. Because I'm headed to Jerusalem. I'm going to tip the tables over because they're scandaling the people. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and return. This would be Jesus. A certain, there's that word again. And he called his ten servants. That would be disciples. I don't know why he said not eleven. Interesting. Interesting. I know the answer, but there's ten. Ten is a Gentile number. And they delivered them ten pounds. Ten is the English weight when the Bible was written. You didn't have dollars, you had pounds. An English weight. And said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens, the Jews, hated him Jesus and sent a message after him saying we will not have this man to reign over us John 1 11 and this would be uh, oh what's that book By John Bunyan holy city holy can't think of the name of it. And it came to pass that when he was returned, uh oh, second advent, 
having received the kingdom, second advent, millennium, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him. Bring the ten men. To whom he had given money. So pound is a money. That he might know how much every man had gained by trading. So you're supposed to gain. God expects you to gain what he's given you. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound has made ten pounds. That's a lot. One hundred percent of a pound would be two pounds. He brought ten. He said to him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a little, very little, have authority over ten cities. Well, that's interesting because Christians will get cities in the millennium, but the Jews will get cities too the land will be divided it says authority the second came saying lord thy pound has gained five pounds well not good as the first guy but 100 percent of a pound would be one would be two pounds he's brought five and he said likewise to him be thou over be thou also over five cities. So he doesn't rebuke the guy for bringing five. As the guy who brought ten. The judgment is not against another person. It's what did you do? The guy that brought the five may have limitations that the ten couldn't get. What if the guy that had the five? What if he lived in the desert area? You know, just... And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Now, the napkin in the Bible that we read about is death. But I never heard about putting money in a napkin. And I don't know if that's a Jewish thing, but as far as an American, it looks so stupid. Put it in a bank. Oh, wouldn't do that. For I feared thee. Really? Because thou art an austere man. Severe. Hard. Wow. The guy gives him money to, to make money and to be rewarded. And that's a hard, severe man. What would you say about your employer? Thou takest up that thou layest not down. And reapest that thou did not sow. And that's very true. But yet, if you're going to apply that to a Christian. Look at all the people who got saved. Yet, who saved them? What did he have to do to save them? Uh-huh. And what you have to do? Just take your feet and go pass out gospel tracts and preach to them? Compared to Isaiah 53? You didn't really do nothing. You just talked. And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth, Matthew 12, 36, will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. You know what God calls somebody who doesn't bring any fruit to him? Wicked. Thou knewest that I am an austere man. Jesus, look at that. Taken up that I had not laid down and reaping where I did not. Look at that. Quotes right out of his mouth. You know what you don't want? You don't want God to quote you at judgment. And he will at the great white throne judgment. To your damnation. Wherefore then giveth not thou, thou my money, my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury. Jews are very great for making money. Where's my money? Well, I kept it. Here it is. Where's the other money? Well, I didn't do nothing with it. I put it in a piggy bank and kept it. Good. It didn't, it's good for nothing. 
And he said unto them that stood by, Now watch, be careful. Take from him the pound and give it to him that had ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he has ten pounds. He's got enough. That's not social America. You're supposed to take from the guy who had ten pounds and give him five of the pounds and give the three of the five to this guy so he'd be equal with everybody. For I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given. And from him that has not, even that he has shall be taken away from him. So when God has given you pounds, and later on we'll read about the talents. And you don't do anything for God with the talents that he's given you or the money. You're not walking around in glory with anything of God's. You take, God's giving you a music ability, and you take that for the world, you walk the streets of gold in New Jerusalem, you'll have no reward of it. You got it here. And it burnt up. But if you take the music ability that God's given you, and you use it for His honor and glory, when you get to heaven, you'll get a crown, you'll get rewards, and maybe save people by what you've done. Gold, silver, or precious stone. God expects a return on the investment of Calvary upon your saved soul. How's that? Can I make it any more clear? And there's no excuse. God will not quite excuse for any lazy Christian if you're saved and you don't do nothing. I'm saved, that's it, good enough. Well, you're going to have to face the judge. Now, you won't lose your soul. I don't know what it would be like to, to worship God and be able to throw your crown down at him and you ain't got one. God is not socialism. He will not give you a crown just to feel sorry for you. You don't earn that crown. You will not get it. But those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. That's the second advent. And when he had thus spoken, he went before, ascending up to Jerusalem. So when they say he's going up and down from Jerusalem, it's a mountain. That's what it means. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethpage and Bethany, at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye to the village over against you. In the which at your entering ye shall find a colt. Here we go. Now we're coming to the last days. Tied. Where at never a man sat. Now I have been told by people who have raised, whatever you call it, raised, herded. You just do not hop on a donkey and start riding. You don't, I had one guy tell me, he says, donkeys that you could ride, you don't even try to put a saddle on the thing. I think it's a, what, a blanket? It's not a saddle, it's a blanket or something? And he told me these words, you will get a rough ride. If you get a ride. That's what he told me. Where it never a man sat, so this would be, I would assume, a near poss impossibility. Loose him. And bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you lose him? Thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord, capital L, has need of him. And they that were sent went their way and found even as he had sent unto them, fulfilling the scriptures. These two out of mouth for two or three witnesses and the people that were established the fact is that this prophecy is now checked off. <laughs> 
And they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were losing the colt, the owners there upset unto them, Why lose the colt? Hey, that's mine. They said, The Lord has need of him. Now, how do you know that these people that owned this colt were law abiding citizens of God? Because the law said, anyone that has need, let him need. So he said, go ahead. Okay, take it. And they had to know that Jesus was a Jew. They had to know these guys were Jews. They helped them. Okay, go ahead. You know, they didn't give no fight. Go ahead. And you know what happens? You never hear about these people anymore. You never hear what happened to the donkey afterwards. But you do know that Jesus brought it back because Jesus would not be a thief. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the coat, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they, oh, here's the creator of all asses, riding an ass that's never been broken. Donkeys were the limousines of the presidents, the hierarchy of the beautiful horses of kings and queens. David rode on a mule. Absalom, when he took over the country, rode upon a mule. This is the Cadillac. This is the king. This is the president's... I forget what they call the car. This is the Air Force One for, for Jesus Christ coming into the city. Proclaiming King Jesus is coming into Jerusalem. But he's not a king yet. He's the suffering Messiah. And they brought him to Jesus and cast their garments upon the coat, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. Doesn't that sound great? If we were to stop the Bible right there, let's keep reading. And when he had, when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude. Of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen look at that eyewitnesses of everything that Jesus has seen let's read one more verse saying blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord capital L B in heaven that's what that guy wanted today and glory in the highest doesn't that sound so great doesn't that sound wonderful we were to end the Bible right here but what's going to happen in less than a week? Crucify them. Crucify them. Kill them. Give us Barabbas. So just because somebody comes up to you and says, Hi, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. You better check them out with the Bible. You better find out. And God expects you to examine them. These people, it's just mouth service. And these people are going to give an account in their mouth according to Matthew 12, 12, 36. And it says they witnessed everything that Jesus did. It said they witnessed everything that Jesus did. All the mighty works that they have seen, they have seen, and they still yell out, crucify him. And some of the Pharisees, here we go, there comes that black cloud. Among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Rachel, shut your father up. <laughs> and he answered and said unto them, that's another personal joke. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And recording devices use stones. Yeah. Yeah. Loud voice. <laughs> now, if you want to study instead of Mars and Pluto and asteroids, I start give, getting rocks where Jesus walked and start playing with them things. But who would want to hear the word of God? Something about rocks. Bible mentions rocks. 
And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. He knows the condition. He knows in 27 years this place will be destroyed. And in 27 years it will be destroyed even in 2016. Saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, peace again, but now, they are hid from thine eyes. They're rejoicing. They're glorifying. But it's a show. It's not heart. They're thinking he's coming to destroy the Romans. He's coming to die for their souls. And they're going to help. For the day shall come upon thee. That thy enemy shall cast a trench about thee, Titus, and compass thee around about, Titus, and keep thee on every side, Titus, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within. They shall not leave thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> they knew that I was going to sneeze. They knew it's not the time of thy visitation, the first advent. Had they believed Jesus, had they received him through the 33 and a half years that he has come, history would have been rewritten. History would have been wonderful. But Satan won. Yet there's more battles for Jesus in the final war. Jesus will win. They will get a time that's coming called Jacob's trouble. Why? 21, 22 chapters of Luke. Entire gospel of Matthew. Entire gospel of Mark. That's why. They proclaim with their mouths. Of all the works that Jesus seen. And we're going to see later on in a few chapters. They're going, to, they're going to testify that we want him dead. Under the title of King of the Jews. And then it gets worse in the book of Acts. That Paul, he was, you know what? I'm tired of it. I'm going to the Gentiles. And he went into the temple. Now it even gets worse. And began to cast out them that sold therein. And then that bought. That's interesting. People were coming to Jerusalem. This is the feast of the Passover. They would have to get their sacrifices. And Jesus is rebuking the buyers. You ought to know this is not the place of commerce. Now, from the scriptures we know, where would they get a lamb for the sacrifices that's about to happen? That's not too far away. When they head down to Bethlehem, where the shepherds were, where Jesus was born, the house of bread, it wasn't supposed to be in the temple. I guarantee that shepherds would probably bring their flocks about this time around Jerusalem. You know, you know, come Christmas time, you made it down here in Florida. Right after Thanksgiving, you start seeing little Christmas tree places start showing up. And you go get your Christmas tree. Well, I guarantee in Jerusalem and around Jerusalem, these little sheep markets will start showing up. Buy your sacrifice. What do you need here? But the problem is, it's in the temple. Now, let me ask you a question. Let's, let's be perfectly frank on this. Usually, I don't talk about sex or anything like that. But if they are selling animals in the temple, and are they not selling animals in the temple? What about the crap that the animals are leaving behind? Now, is that holy? Didn't the law say if you got up in the middle of the night and had to go potty out in the field, that you were to cover that waste? 
when Jesus comes, when God comes walking through the camp, he don't see that doo-doo? Isn't that in the law? And yet you got doo-doo from animals, you got crap on the holy floors of the temple because they're buying and selling. And guess what? Here comes Jesus into his temple and he's seen animal dung. When God comes walking amongst the camp, you bury, bury your dung. God has walked into the camp and he's finding dung. How's that for a passage of the law? And to look it up in the law, look up under paddle. And you'll find that verse I'm talking about. And it tells you to bury it. It's talking about bathroom. And when you read the law about the sacrifice, they would take parts of the animal and the dung and bring it to an unclean place. That's in the law too. You got animals defecating on the floors of the temple. Saying unto them, it is written, my house, my house. Now, that's Jesus speaking. That's God's house. Jesus has proclaimed before the nation of Israel in the temple, Jehovah Witnesses, I am God. It's my house. Go back and read what Solomon said in his dedicated prayer. God, God, God. Jesus said, my house. Is the house of prayer, Anna. Is that what Anna did all the time? Is that where she stayed? Is that where you went for prayer? 33 years, 33 and a half years ago? Remember Anna? I bet you she's got, if she hasn't died, I bet you she's gotten sick of the conditions going on. If she hasn't died yet. Simeon's already died because the Bible said, the Holy Spirit said, you will see the, the Lord's Christ and you're going to die. But ye have made it a den of thieves. Ooh, you know what that means? They're extorting the people. Used car salesmen. Used camel salesmen. And he taught daily in the temple. How's that? He's trying to get them right, but he knows. He knows their condition is failure, but he's still trying. But, black cloud, the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him. Why? Commerce was broken. And could not find what they might do. They couldn't do that with Daniel either. For all the people were very attentive to hear him, but not believe. These Pharisees had such a power that, you know what? You lost it all when you believed on Christ. That's why you're not to set your riches on things on this earth. We're heading now to the doom of Israel. And yet God said a raiment will be saved. 